The report of the American College of Cardiology and American Heart Association Task Force on Clinical Practice Guidelines, what it should be focused on is preventive guidelines. So here's where they fell on coronary artery calcium. Coronary artery calcium testing may be considered in adults 40 to 75 without diabetes and with LDL cholesterol levels greater than or equal to 70 at a 10-year atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease risk greater than 7.5%, up to 20% if a decision about statin therapy is uncertain. Do I agree with that? And is that how I use it? No, I'll tell you in a minute how and when I tend to use it. It's a level 2B recommendation, which means it's prudent and it's usable in certain instances. So that's sort of a lukewarm kind of recommendation from that standards committee. But again, as you see, that standards committee is almost complete. To them, it's not even a guideline on heart attack and stroke prevention. It's a guideline on cholesterol. That's their view of preventive medicine. So again, all that may sound lukewarm at best. And many of you in listening to me and hearing that may say, well, who cares what they have to say anyway? Well, I'm not gonna go there. That's not the purpose for these discussions today. I will say that even this is a major move forward for that standards committee for calcium score. You know, several decades, they've said, no, we don't recommend it. Now, I mentioned how and when I use calcium score. I don't use it in all of these places, but I do in a few. Screening for moderate Framingham risk medication questions that's certainly a reasonable time to use it. Again, in most of my patients, I have a fairly good opportunity to get an IMT. I tend to use that more. So for example, on my patients, 80 to 90% will get an IMT. Three to 5% has a calcium score and that's all we can get. And that's what we function from. The second item, rule out risk. And I mentioned a minute ago, there's several good studies indicating that if you have a zero calcium score, probably zero risk. Now, those of you who know this space may be thinking, well, what if somebody's got nothing but soft plaque? That does happen, but it's pretty rare very rare. In fact, I've seen it. But again, you have some other tip-offs. You know, you have obesity problems, you have family history issues, and you know that that patient's maybe in their 50s and they've got a significant family history tending to happen more in the 60s. You know, you've got plenty of evidence to suspect that they're starting to get into this age where they're starting to develop calcium and plaque. Speaking of age, look at this image, interpret it, and tell me that age has nothing to do with heart attack and stroke risk or calcification risk. And it's just very, very clear. You know, so many people think that the diabetes and prediabetes and heart attack and stroke epidemic has everything to do with obesity. Yes, obesity is very important, but aging is even more important. Think about that, be aware. I mentioned Matthew Budoff. In 2013, he said, you can actually use a calcium score to track progression. Like I said, mm, he's a big, big fan of calcium score, but he really did not convince a whole lot of people that calcium score is a great way to follow risk. And I'm one of them. I don't think it's a good way to follow risk because I run into more problems with people like the patient I just described at the beginning of the presentation saying, you know, I did all this stuff. I lost 40 pounds. I'm expecting I'm going to have a huge decrease in calcium score. I'm going to get one of those. And I'm over there saying, oh, please be careful. Think about not doing it. And if you do it, please be aware that you may get a significant increase. Okay, doc, I hear you, but I want to go ahead and get it. Well, doc, I am upset. My calcium score didn't go down. It didn't stabilize. It went way up. And I look at the formulas in research and they say, if you're going up 20, 25% per year, you've got major increase in risk. I lost 40 pounds. I jumped up much more than 20%. That research is telling me I've got a huge amount of risk. And it's like, I've asked you many times, please don't get a calcium score and expect it to give you that kind of clarity on decreasing risk. We know from what you've been doing clinically, you don't lose 40 pounds. You don't get a decrease in your triglyceride over HDL ratio from four down to less than one. You don't get all of those things happening. You don't get a decrease in your hemoglobin A1C from 6.5 down to 5.2. You don't see all those things happening without a decrease in heart attack and stroke risk. Yet your calcium score went up. 
So which are you going to believe? I can tell you what I believe, but I can't tell you what you should believe. There are a couple of places where I use it. As I said, I'll use them in about 5% of my patients. And it's usually when we don't have access to a good IMT.